Don't ascend to PIB Niger Delta Youth Tell Buhari and Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Uche Sekundus, experiences some relief as Board of Trustees tackle Uche and reject interim caretaker committee. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Ann Cole. A coalition of Niger Delta youth groups has called on President Muhammad Buhari to not assent to the petroleum industry bill recently passed by the Senate. The coalition said they reject the 3% approved for host communities, saying the entire PIB was a fraud against the oil-producing communities of the Niger Delta people. Now, speaking on behalf of the coalition at a media briefing in Port Harcourt, Solomon Lenu called for the urgent review of the PIB to reflect the views of the host communities. He added that the action of the Senate undermines 65 years of oil discovery and exploration activities in the region and the resultant devastation of the environment there. Well, joining us to discuss this is Thompson Okorote. He's the deputy national chairman of PANDEF. Thank you very much, Mr. Korote, for joining us. Good evening. Great. I, I want us to start by looking at the uh, PIB. I mean, there had been a, a, a weekend where every single Nigerian was talking about the PIB, uh, the fact that the host communities felt robbed, the fact that um, a certain percentage was going to be devoted to fine oil in the Chad region. I mean, it, it, there was an uproar of sorts and... You know, people hoped that there would be a shift of grounds by members of the Senate, but that hasn't changed. And now it depends. Uh, everybody's looking at Mr. President, obviously hoping for him to either assent or not assent to that PIB bill. But it has taken years for this bill to get to where it is. Um, should we be still dragging our feet on the matter or should we allow for it to be assented to and then continue negotiations? Where does Panda stand on this? Well, it is a great shame for this country that we have refused repeatedly to create a sense of belonging for all Nigerians. For over four, six decades, we have been fighting for justice. Every time those who claim to own Nigeria falsely have continued to reject have continued to reject us, have continued to listen to us. After 65 years, they have come to pass a law that is a fraud. I support our national leader who is saying that Buhari should not sign, give assent to the bill. It is absolutely correct. First of all, why should they talk about 50%? of operating costs to be used to explore in frontier states. That is a fraud. The oil that was discovered in the Niger Delta, we did not use Nigerian money. It's a private business, and those who are exploring uh, the oil in those places will invest their money. And so that itself is a fraud. Secondly, the disparity between 3% and 5%. We have issued, earlier issued a, 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 a statement, a community saying we are for the 5%. Yet, with impunity, they have gone for 3%. We are putting all of this together and find that we regret to belong to this country. Nobody is listening to us. And please, if Buhari wants dust, if it's for dust, it should let this issue be clarified before he signs or two percent to the bill. That's my take. Well, let, let's break it down. Um, we keep, I mean, I know that the box stops at Mr. President's table, and when we're dealing with issues like this, we always finger the president. But then the Niger Delta um, does have representatives at both the upper chamber and the lower chamber. You have states like Bielsa, Kwaibom, uh, and, and Delta. Uh, 
uh, Cross River and maybe a number of the, the states that are all producing, they have representatives, they have legislators at all of these levels. And, and these are the people who obviously are from those oil communities, who know and understand the plight of their people, and they proceeded to st stick with the 3%, including the, 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 the minister uh, who, who also is from the River Rhine area, is part of the com um, oil producing communities. So really, can we put this blame solely at the feet of Mr. President? Uh, you said that our leaders don't listen to us, but, but that means it starts with even those guys who say that they are representing us. And, and what, does this, what, what does this say about leadership generally? What, what, what we are saying is that the government should check that by refusing to accept all, all the representatives that they are talking about from the Niger Delta area have done their best. What you do not understand that is that there's a, 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 a majority in both chambers that do not allow justice to reign. As they say, the majority will, uh, will, 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 have, will have their way and the minority will have their say. What is happening here is that in both chambers of the National Assembly, our people are in minority. It is not that they have not been talking, it is not that they have not been fighting but they have just been shouted down. That is the truth. And we'll talk about, now we'll talk about population, some figures that have been wrong from foundation of the country, and it's playing out to perfect injustice against minorities. This is a country that is not looking at people who need justice, who is crying for justice. That is the issue. Our people did their best. But the majority is bragging on. I mean, I do not know. I, I, I'm still pushing on this. I do not know how good enough their best is because, I mean, whether they're in the minority or not, if they feel strongly against or, you know, the fact that this percentage is not good enough, there's something called lobbying. They lobby their, their mates in the, on, the, on the floor of the National Assembly for other matters. Why can't they lobby their mates on this particular issue? It seems like... They're also okay with it, and they're just paying lip service. I might be wrong, but when you say they've tried their best and that's all they can do, I'm not sure if that sits well with the people in the Niger Delta, if that sits well with the people in Ogoni community that have not been able to fish nor to plant. And for all the people who have had, you know, spills or destruction of, um, you know, the environment in their areas as a result of international oil companies' operations, is that good enough? Can it sit with the people in the Niger Delta? Well, it, 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 I tell you that I have personal knowledge of how best our people have tried. They have lobbied. You remember a few years ago, Pandev presented a 16-point agenda to Mr. President, and it covered several areas of dissent by the people. At that time, if you remember, we rose, our boys rose, and oil production was brought down to less than one, mil one million, seven hundred thousand. And with that presentation, the leadership of the Pandev went ahead, broke out peace, and asked the boys to go up the creeks and let the production uh, go up again. Now, if that is not a lobby strategy, what else? If there was a problem, they know that if we strike, something will go wrong. We will, we will end less. Let's talk about the consequence uh, of this bill and how it will affect people in the area. I'd like to start with the issue of the militancy that also at the, at the, at the root of it was the fact that these oil-producing commu oil communities were giving into the nation's coffers, but they were unable to benefit from the oil that was taken right from under them. How do we prevent this from happening if every single person and the voices in the Niger Delta, including that of Pandev, is not enjoying the benefits of this PIB because they all seem to be kicking against it? How do we also avoid another resurgence of sorts that might become a problem for us in the Niger Delta? And that is the solution we are providing. Mr. President, you will return the bill to the National Assembly. 
and asking them to look at the concerns that have been raised by our people in the Niger Delta. And the, the, the case we have mentioned is Jamil. Because if there is no redress, we are afraid that our boys, who are already warming up, may come back. And we are receiving the punches. We went to appeal to them to shield the, the sword. Now there's another problem. And they are, they are warming up. We don't want that to happen. Let Mr. President uh, not assent to it. We we'll send it back to the National Assembly to give them another opportunity of making sure that it's, this issue uh, sorted out. Mm. Let's talk about the um, threat by host communities to redraw um, social licenses. Um, what could be the implications of that economically for us? Well, it will be disastrous. Economically, it will not be too good at all. Uh, we were celebrating, uh, some of them were celebrating that in fact, if it is 5%, they can manage it and see how we can now make life better in the rural areas, in the oil producing communities. You take a place like Oloibri, it is a shadow of its original self. Mm. You go to a place called Oloibri, and that is where the first barrel of oil was found in 1956. This is what we are talking about. And why should you take products from under our feet, from our belly, take it away and ignore the place. Because that is the result that that is taking place over and over again. Neglect. But you're taking all the money. You look at Abuja, look at Abuja. It was oil 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 money that has built Abuja. The people are saying that it will be unfair and they will protect, they will act. The implication of this will not be good for everybody. I, have, I, I haven't seemed to hear, hear rather, I have not heard uh, the voices of governors in the Niger Delta as much as I've heard um, voices of groups and CSOs and even certain Niger Delta youth. We haven't really heard governors uh, speak against this or speak, uh, you know, in a unifying voice. And I'm talking about the governors of the oil-producing communities. Uh, we haven't really heard from them. Um, what do you think is responsible for the somewhat silence coming from those governors? Could, it, could that silence be misread as they being okay with what the, the House uh, has already put out? The governors are not silent. They met and they issued the community condemning the 30 percent and saying that the five percent is what they stand by they have not been silent mm. the government should make and issue the communicate well uh, a communicate is great enough and I, I know but then we keep hearing voices of the people in the niger delta people like pandep you know pushing every day and asking government to do something but let's move away from that quickly let's talk about you know who has powers to we draw licenses. The host communities have said that they will do that. But is it not the place of the government to withdraw those social licenses? Well, it, it is the government. That is why we are saying that even the constitutional review that is being undertaken, uh, I hope will be deep enough. There are several legislations that are not, to be, are not supposed to be at the, at the federal level. You control everything. You have the oil. The everything about the oil and gas is on the exclusive legislative list, which is not correct. And uh, they, they have the power. They have all the power, and they misapply it. They are using it as an instrument of oppression, and that is where the danger is. They so say absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. So do we so so what is the what is the fate of the people in the Niger Delta? Do we wait for a constitutional uh, amendment which may not happen anytime soon or do we yeah. take a PIB that is why, not necessarily something that sits well with us? Which should take priority over which because we do not know what 
is in the mind of the president if he's going to assent to it or not, whether he's going to listen to us or whether he's going to go with his gut. But what should take priority? Should the PIB put on pause while we wait for the constitution to be amended to reflect um, something that would help us to get the kind of value that we need to receive in the Niger Delta? The priority should be the PIB bill. If it's properly done, we can be going on with that while we wait for the constitutional amendment. Okay. That is why we are at that the, that the president to return it. If he change it back, there will now be room for further negotiation. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you to you. Tom Nkorote is a national deputy um, chairman of PANDEF, and he joined us live from Bielsa. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, and God bless you. All right. Well, thank Keep you for... Keep on the fight. Join us. All right. Thank okay. you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we speak about the People's Democratic Party and the fight for the soul of the party. Stay with us.